Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, March 27th. We're gonna go over all the alerts, all the current positions, just for you pro members. And before we do that, let's jump into the community and talk about who got caught being hot. So this week goes to our friend Robin H. Robin's been with us for since I think November of last year and just been consistently providing value, sharing trade ideas, answering other members' questions, asking great questions. So congrats, Robin. You got caught being hot. Uh, also, before we jump in, I, I posted in the community this morning, uh, we're considering moving the community platform to to a new platform. And it's it's a little bit more of a forum style. I know there's been some you know discussions, complaints, kind of issues with the current community where, you know, it kind of auto, auto defaults to your, uh, what they call personal feed instead of showing everything. So I know some people had questions about missing different posts and notifications and things like that. It, there are ways to make sure that you, um, with the bell, you know, make sure you receive notifications, but there are some other little quirks. We just, one thing is we don't have any control over the current community. It's kind of a out of the box, platform and and you just kind of got to deal with how it works and it's been great but uh we're always trying to improve and so we are just we're looking for feedback it's not 100 percent sure that we're gonna switch over but uh but there's a couple benefits one is with this with this new platform one like i said there's no news feed so you can easily just go to the different topic you want to see and it'll It'll notify you when a new post comes in, and you can really have a detailed customization over how you receive notifications. The other thing is it's very developer-friendly. So our developer can jump in and you know create or tie in other applications and things. So there's a lot of potential that we can do uh, with it, and it's pretty you know clean cut, easy to use, very user-friendly. So. If you haven't already jumped in here, feel free. Just give us uh, give us some feedback if you have any. We really value your opinions just because, you know, this is obviously for you. We want to make this the, the best, most frictionless, easy to use, uh, and, and, and most importantly, make sure that you are engaged. Now, one thing it doesn't have is, you know, the Mighty Networks app, which is the current platform, it has a great app. If any of you use it on mobile, it's very easy, you know, keeps you logged in so you don't ever have to log in again. One of the problems with it, though, is there's no integration with other platforms. So, you know, we have the, the community platform, which has one sign in. We have our membership, which has another sign in. And so once you once you kind of get on board and, and figure it out, it's it's not too bad. But it, I know it's it's especially confusing for new members coming on board. So just want to get everyone's feedback. And, uh, you know, this is pretty bare bones. We basically just set up some topics and a couple of posts in here, but it's pretty bare bones right now, but uh, a lot of potential. So let us know what you think. Uh, on that note, we also are going to be rolling out the new uh, membership platform. And so this is what that looks like. So we've you've got a dashboard here. And so you'll uh, you'll have, you know, your navigation alerts, your your course that you can go to, all the different strategy courses. We're, we're just going to put them all into one called the Pro Member Master Course. Um, it's a pretty sleek design as far as for viewing the videos. Uh, if we take a look here at a quick example. Uh, oh, come on, come on, come on. Load up, load up. Uh, but basically, um, you know, it's a, it's a lot better just from a um, usability than our current membership platform. And so go through and click on the different videos, uh, nice, you know, much better video player and that kind of thing. Um, and then we've got, uh, you know, all the, you know, the downloads, watch list, trade tracker, link to the community. We're, we're going to have a live stream and chat room. So if you click on that, where we'll we'll go live a lot more different uh, topics and presentations where you can uh, chime in by chat and all that good stuff. Uh, the other cool thing is the alerts, and so this is actually what's been taking the longest. Is it doesn't look like much, but the amount of development that goes into it, integrating the, in the back end to deliver these, the way they're going to be delivered is is pretty complex. But uh, 
the look and feel I think is is much better. You know, it's going to have what type of trade rolling, opening, closing, whatever the symbol, initial strategy. It'll have the toss string here, uh, the trade comments, IV percentile, days to expiration, uh, and then and then the biggest improvement is really these legs. So. Uh, this is going to come both here in the membership area as well as by email. So, you know, we get a lot of questions, you know, when you see the toss string, especially for newer traders, you don't really know what that means unless you can copy and paste it into toss or if you're familiar with the strategy. Uh, so we're going to break it down to show you exactly what the legs are, you know, so sell a call at the 80 strike, sell a put at the 95 strike and so forth and so on. So it gives you exactly what we're doing uh, to make that a little bit more easily interpreted. And then of course, uh, we've got the current positions and closed trades. So you'll always have the ability to see the screenshot and exactly where we're at with the different positions. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then we got some more stuff coming. Um, you, know, you can, you can update your profile and things here like any membership platform should. Unfortunately, the current one is just a little archaic and so it doesn't. So uh, that's going to be nice. Uh, so anyway, um, that's what we've got going on. And then, like I said, a lot more stuff coming, but this is kind of the initial stuff. It's taken a lot longer than expected, but it is coming soon. So uh, let us know what you think. And then, um, and then let's go to the alerts. Uh, one other thing, question uh, that's come up in the community, uh, especially on a couple of these bunkers, because we haven't done too many of them, is you know, what are the, what are the, what are the strikes? So remember under current portfolio here in the membership area, we always post the screenshot and it's got the strikes down below there. So you can see those. So, um, I know there's been a lot of questions. Uh, there are several questions in the community about which strikes and, you know, you know, just from the toss string, it was a little confusing. So always make sure you check there if you have that question and let's jump into the alerts for the week, starting with Monday, which was, what was Monday, the 23rd, yeah. So first trade, rolling adjusting trade in XLK. So we had a long put vertical and we, we rolled this from April to May and then just adjusted our strikes as price continued to move down. So let's check out XLK on the platform. Go to the analyze tab. So you've got uh, price hanging out outside the range, obviously uh, with the anticipation of the stimulus uh, deal being passed, we had a pretty sizable up move this week, and so after we after we rolled that trade, got a little bit of uh, push back against us on our, our on some of these short uh, vertical spreads, and so that's where we're at right now. So this one's right out of range, but we are looking for further downside in the market, and so we're we're okay having this on and keeping this and uh, providing that short delta exposure. Uh, real quick before I continue on some of the other alerts, just to just to look at the S and P today and, and talk a little bit about what happened. So the um, so you know that we had that we had the the deal on the table, passed by the Senate, needed a uh, vote by the House, and it was supposed to be signed this morning. And then one one member of Congress decided instead of doing the vote over the phone, he was going to require everyone to come back in person and do a live vote for so <laughs> there's all these crazy congress women and congressmen traveling around the country jumping on uh, you know empty airplanes and getting in their cars and driving back to dc to get this thing done uh they did get it done if we look at an intraday chart five minute chart um you know what overnight the the market was down you know, so in the gray shaded area, we have the market going down. So it, it opened down and then all day, basically, it just kind of grinded higher to a point where it got almost back to even on the day based on yesterday's close. And then in the last, what is that, 30 minutes just absolutely fell apart. And what's what's interesting about this is that was about the time that Trump announced that he was signing this $2.2 trillion stimulus so the market is is acting very interesting. You know, it's 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 the whole classic buy the rumor, sell the news, right? In anticipation of this, the market is reacting positively, and then once it happens, boom, the bottom the bottom falls out. And so, you know, we you know who knows? I mean, this thing could just 
continue and rip higher, but I just don't see that happening. I really think we're going to see some more downside. I think the the financial devastation of all these businesses being closed and unemployment and 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 things that are going on, I really think we're going to see some further downside. So that's what we're anticipating. Uh, we, we added some additional short delta, which I'll get to in the alerts, but I just wanted to kind of give that little uh, commentary on on what happened today specifically. S&P's ended up down 88, Dow down almost 1,000, uh, NASDAQ down 283, and the Russell down 46. The market is currently closed, been closed for about an hour at the time of this recording. So that's what's happening. Uh, opening trade in uh, SPY. So we put on a new iron duck in SPY. I did this one with seven days to expiration. Uh, we ended up taking that off, booking a beak profit after price ran higher, got to a point where there's very little chance of getting back to the duck head. So we just booked that uh, beak profit. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So another one of our short call verticals rolled this from April to May, adjusted the strikes down as the market had moved down. And so let's take a look at DIA. We've got two sets on here. One with four contracts, one with three. Here's the one with three. After with that big move higher, that one, uh, the price is out of range on that piece. And then this one here, price is just outside of range here. So just, again, keeping that on for that short delta exposure. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DE. So similar situation. This uh, short call vertical rolled this from April to May and adjusted those strikes down. I'll go to DE on the platform here in just a second because we had another trade. Uh, closing trade in Roku. So this was the one that we actually took off for a loser. We did a reverse duck, uh, got caught in that upswing, and Roku really fired higher. And, and so we we got we just bailed on that one. Let's take a look at a chart of Roku. I was actually looking to potentially re-enter this, but we we entered after it already made a couple days of move higher, and then on this day, just these next two days, it just exploded higher. So we got out. Um, I was looking to potentially add another one on, but it hasn't gone up again since then. So might potentially look for that. Uh, it does have earnings coming up here in a little over a month. So we, we've got some time in there, but, uh, if we get a pop up in Roku, we may look to add another reverse duck because it does have that reverse skew where the, where the calls are trading richer than the puts. Next trade, closing trade in VXX. So when volatility had really spiked, we we sold short call verticals on VXX in anticipation of volatility contracting, and it sure did. Uh, earlier this week, took this off on 324, booked well over 50% of max profit on that trade. Uh, opening trade in XRT. So as the market continued to go up this week, we added some short delta, one of which of those trades was a bunker in XRT. Now, we used XRT for a couple reasons. One, it's uh, it's the retail sector ETF. I think retail still has some some downside, uh, even, even more downside than the overall broad market like the S&P. So that's one reason. The other thing is we've got several trades in DIA, QQQ, IWM, SPY, uh, so instead of using that, we just went to one of these sector ETFs, in this case, retail, uh, did this with 87 days to expiration. And part of the reason, so, you know, we talk about the kind of the, 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 the range of dates to use here, you know, anywhere from, you know, up to 140 days out, we, we went on the lower end of that just because we're anticipating a fairly quick move downwards. If we, if we wanted, if we were having short Delta and, and wanting a little bit more duration, we could have, we could have gone further out, but in this case, uh, looking for a pretty quick move. So use a little bit shorter duration as it relates to these bunker trades. Um, and so I'll go to XRT here in a minute, cause we got another trade in there. Uh, opening trade in TLT. So we did a, a double calendar in TLT. This one we did uh, nine days on the front week, 15 days on the back week. And so let's take a look at TLT. Now this one had some implied volatility contraction. You can see after we put this on, you can see the IV percentile hasn't moved much, but the IV rank has really contracted. And that's why we like to have both of these on our screen because there's sometimes when IV rank 
you know, if, it, if there's a big spike, it's going to be a little bit inaccurate, whereas IV percentile is a little bit more steady. And in a case like this, where you see implied volatility high, you know, that that is a major contraction, even though I, IV percentile stayed steady. So that's that's one of the reasons that we keep both of these on our screen. Uh, going to the analyze tab here. So based on that, remember a calendar, double calendars benefit from IV expansion and this contracted. So you can see we're still well within range, but we're down a little bit on the trade. And so if we get a little bit of uh, IV expansion in the bonds next week, that'll benefit this. And uh, this expires 4-4. So we'll be getting out of that trade either the day of expiration or the day before. And if it does rip out of our range, then then we'll be out. You know, we've we've got about uh, so eight eight hundred and seventy two bucks is about the the well that's the debit we paid, and and that's our max risk. And so if we get down about five hundred bucks, we will we'll bail on this trade. But hopefully it kind of stays in range and we get a nice profit there. Next trade opening trade in XRT. So we added the next day we added another bunker after that big move higher. Um, same cycle and we just used a little bit different strike. So let's go to XRT and. Check that out here on the Analyze tab. So we did one is a four by eight, four contracts by eight contracts, and that one uh, looks like this here. Now the the market is currently closed, and so that's not that PNL is not accurate. We are actually profitable on this trade. Uh, let's take a look at the other one, see if it's a little bit. Yeah, see, I mean, it, this PNL is not drooping down like that. It's it's up here, so we're actually up a couple hundred bucks. Uh, on this trade, on both these trades so far, uh, it's just not showing it because the market is currently closed. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in DE. So we, again, the market moving higher, adding some short delta. In this case, we add another short call vertical in DE. I uh, did this out in May with 50 days. So now we've got two sets in DE. Uh, had a, I mean, DE really ripped higher when the market was going higher as well. So, uh, we are out of range a little bit here. Well, on the, on the one with three contracts, we're well out of range, but still a, a you know decent chance we get back into range before expiration. And then the one we added, uh, price moved higher after we added it, so it's a little bit out of range too. But again, keeping this for that for that downside exposure. Next trade, closing trade in SPY. So this one I already mentioned, where we closed our duck, booked a little bit under beak profits. Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we did a new weekly double calendar in SPX. Did this one with the front week at eight days, back week at 11 days. And again, I put here, if, if, if the loss exceeds 500, that, that's when we would bail on a losing trade. Otherwise, we'll keep this until uh, close to expiration, either day of or day before expiration. And, you know, in the course, we talk about getting out if... Um, you know, if price, if we hit a loss point of about 25% of debit paid, the thing with these that how they differ from the ones that we that we with the criteria from the course is, you know, we're we're using about the 40 delta, so it was a little bit closer into price uh, in the way in the way we teach it in the course, and we we're going with you know six to eight days on the front week, all the way out to 20 to 22 days in the back week, and that. That is still a, a great way to do it in lower implied volatility uh, situations. But right now, we're in such a period of high implied volatility that we're using about the 25 to 30 delta. So we're widening this thing out, giving ourselves a higher probability of profit. And then we are squeezing in the duration of our, between our front week and our back week. So you can see the front week is the April 3rd cycle, and the back week is only April 6th, so just three days difference. And by doing that, we're lowering our buying power requirement, so this only costs about 1100 bucks in buying power to put on. And and it's taken a little bit out of the game of the differential between the between the between the durations. It comes becomes a little bit more of a th uh, just a pure theta decay play. Um, yeah, obviously implied volatility expanding and track contracting are still absolutely going to affect this, but there's not as wide of a differential between the durations. Uh, so that's, that's why we're kind of doing it this way during this period. And then I said, you know, if we get down about 500 bucks, that's when we'll bail on this. And that's about 50% of the debit paid here because of the different criteria, criteria that we're using to set these up. So hopefully that makes sense. 
Um, so anyway, this is, uh, you know, we put this on just a couple days ago. It's already up 600 bucks. These, these, uh, weekly short duration double calendars have just been killing it. Uh, so hopefully that continues. Obviously, uh, this implied high applied volatility isn't gonna, isn't gonna last forever, but get in while the getting is good. And, uh, and remember we, we try not to put these on, like we didn't add another one today because of the spike in implied volatility. We like to put these on in periods when implied volatility is contracting. You know, you can see VIX futures up 16% today. So that's not a day you want to enter one of these, but if you already have it on, it sure helps. So that's why we're up 600 bucks on this trade already. And then if you go through time, so this expires 4.4. So if we take this off on 4.2 or 4.3, you know, we've got a, you know, based on current price and volatility, I and mean, we've got a, you know, profit potential in the kind of the, you know, 1200 to, Twelve hundred to eighteen hundred dollars. Obviously, if implied volatility expands, that could be even more. If we wait, if we go even one more day, you know, more up into that two thousand, twenty one hundred, eighteen hundred dollar type profit range. So, and 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 the cool thing is, I mean, we're only risking eleven hundred dollars on this trade. That's the max profit and the buying power requirement, and we're starting out with you know, about an 80%, 75, 80% probability of profit. So it's just crazy the way that implied volatility is, uh, is affecting these options right now. So good stuff. And, um, and, and again, another shout out to Tim Weiss. I mean, he's doing a little bit different style and he's using a double diagonals where the, uh, where the strikes are different as opposed to the calendars. You get the, the short put and the long put are the same strike short call and the long call are the same strike. Uh, but the concepts are the same and implied volatility affects it the same. Um, it's just, you know, that's, that's Tim's preference and, but shout out to him for, uh, kind of, you know, really posting a lot on that in the community. It, it caused me to go back and, and look at these and, and so we'll, we'll continue to do these, uh, and, and, uh, hopefully keep up the good work. Next trade, opening trade in wind. So we did a another bunker trade. We did this one in wind. So again, looking for short delta exposure. And in this case, looking at casinos. And, and it was a good choice, uh, obviously, in hindsight. Don't know this is going to happen, but you know, wind down 11% today. So that is helpful. So we are profitable here. Again, I'm not sure if that's quite accurate. Shows up 138 bucks so far. I think it might be a little bit better than that if the market was open. But uh, good, good trade so far. Nonetheless, closing trade in SPX. So this was the weekly double calendar that we put on last week. So we were just in this for six days, booked almost two grand on the trade with just one contract. Uh, great trade there. Next trade, rolling dusting trade in CL. So oil. So we had that remaining short put and we were, you know, hoping for a little bit of a bounce before the 21 days to expiration came. Uh, we ended up doing this today with 20 days and rolled out to 48. So we rolled out that short put and then added the call back in. And so essentially we bought back that put and sold a strangle and, and we're inverted. So we've got the 32 call and the 47 and a half put. And so let's take a look at the platform. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, so that's the other one we have One we just rolled looks like this. So you know, you can see we've got by by going inverted, we're collecting a credit on the roll. We've got you know a big max profit of over eighty four hundred dollars. So if if we can get a little bit of a bounce in oil and stay in this range, and you know you know get back another let's say fifty percent of that, so another forty two hundred dollars, and then roll again, and and you know if implied volatility stays high, it'll 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 take a few cycles to get back that loss. But I've I've gotten back bigger losses, and so uh, for those of you still in it with me. Uh, that's the plan. We're gonna we're gonna continue to manage this and, and try to get back to profitability. Uh, the other piece of that of doing that is we also added another one. And man, I mean, the, <laughs> the implied volatility in oil has been nuts. Right after we put this on, implied volatility spiked. We are down like nineteen hundred dollars, even though we are almost dead centered in the range of this thing. And then implied volatility contracted like crazy, and now we're up four hundred. Uh, you know, just. You know, had we had we put this thing on just like two days later, uh, we probably already would have taken it off just a few days later and booked, you know, 30, 40, 50 percent of, of max profit. But, of course, you can't uh, can't trade in hindsight. So we are where we are. 
Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in SMH. So we had this short strangle in SMH, and so got down to 21 days to expiration, so we rolled out to May. So we take a look at SMH. Uh, we kept the strikes the same because it was pretty well centered, and so the price is hanging out right here. So now we're just playing the waiting game, waiting, waiting for some more theta decay, and hopefully we bebop around in this range here. Next trade, XBI. So same kind of a situation. Just got down to 21 days expiration, rolled out to May. Uh, in this case, XBI is inverted. And so here's what that looks like. And again, market's closed. This P&L line looks a little goofy, but uh, price is hanging out right here. And so just uh, just looking for some more theta decay to decay in XBI. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions, starting with 6E. So we've got this strangle, which has been adjusted into a straddle. Uh, price is hanging out pretty well centered here. So just trying to get back some, some profit, get back to profits in 6E. Mentioned oil. ES, we've got this uh, long put vertical here. Price is just inside range. So just holding that for that short delta. Gold, another crazy IV. Uh, you know, this, I mean, this thing was way out here. The price was way out of range, but there's still so much premium left in the untested side that we did not adjust. And then price ripped all the way back here. Now we're in the upper end or the upper end of the range. And so gold has just been on a crazy whip. Um, and so we're just still holding this. And, you know, obviously implied volatility has expanded. And so that's why you're seeing that PL line down from, uh, from where it normally would be in a, in a normal market. But uh, just holding this and continuing to let that theta decay. Natty gas, we've got this uh, adjusted strangle here. Price is hanging out right here on the lower end of the range. If we take a look at the untested side, still got a lot of premium in those calls. So we're not looking to make an adjustment yet. And as far as time goes, still got 31 days. So got another 11-ish days before we would roll that one out in time. ZB, uh, ZB was starting to act nice for us, coming back into range. And then it's, and then it's been ripping higher here uh, over the last week and a half or so. Uh, but again, we've got two different inverted strangles. Uh, that's not right. So we've got this one. Uh, so we need a little bit of downside action in bonds and need some downside action here in bonds as well. Now we've got 28 days. So next Friday or next Monday, we'll be rolling these out as well. So hopefully we get a little bit of downside action before we do that. Wheat, we've got an iron condor. Price is hanging out right here, just waiting for some more time to pass. If we do get out here, I almost added another wheat iron condor. Price is all the way down here on the lower end break even, and I almost added one, but then the next, uh, when I went to do it, pr price just ripped higher and it's continued higher. Now we're in the upper end of this range of this one. So just playing the waiting game here. If we take a look at wheat, you can see it was on that long slide and then boom, with price, of, price of wheat just, just absolutely accelerated. So that is where we are at. Apple down 4% today. Some big swings in Apple. You can see prices just inside the range here of our long put vertical. Again, holding that for short delta. I mentioned DE. I mentioned DIA. IWM, another short delta play. Price is hanging out just outside the break even. Looking for some downside action there. This one is still in April, so just, just holding this. And we'll hold this all the way down to expiration week if we need to, but... You know, if we obviously if we get a quick move lower, we'll roll this out to May and, and keep that short delta on. QQQ, we've got this short call vertical. Price is hanging out just outside the range. Need a little bit of downside action to get back in. Uh, let's see, SPY. Did I mention no? Okay, so we got an iron condor in SPY. It's pretty well centered. Uh, just went with waiting for some more profit before we get out of that one. TLT, I mentioned win, I mentioned that one, XBI, XLK, another short delta. This is this being a long put vertical. Uh, just looking for some more downside to get back in there. Also, I've got, got a couple of questions in the community this week about, you know, if I'm looking to add a vertical spread for, for short delta, what's better, a short call vertical or a long put vertical? Well, as you can see, we've got both. Um, you know, it's, it's really a directional play and obviously because of the long put component. If you have a long put vertical, if price goes down, typically implied volatility is going to expand and that's gonna give you ever so slightly a little bit more benefit 
Uh, but it works both ways. If price goes up and vi volatility contracts, you're a tiny bit better off having a short call vertical. So not a big deal either way. Either one is just fine. And then lastly, XRT, which I already mentioned, we've got those two bunkers on. So that is where we're at, my friends. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week.